guys, we are now, forget about being in the quote-unquote holiday season. We are now at this portion of the programming, as they say in the NFL, where you are starting to separate the bad teams from the good teams from the great teams, the pretenders and the contenders. And if you are a Washington football fan, if you are a Philadelphia Eagle fan, Things are starting to break your way. If you are a Giant fan, hello, thank you very much. Uh, you realize big changes are coming in New York, and rightfully so, and thank God. We'll get into that in a couple moments. So the Philadelphia Eagles got a little dicey against the New York Jets uh, early on in this game. But once again, the veteran backup for the Philadelphia Eagles in this regard, Gardner Minshew, steps up and plays a really nice game against the Jet squad. So I know right away, people watching that game on Sunday as the Eagles win 33 to 18, more importantly, get a win, rebound from a bad giant loss, improve to six and seven. The talk over the last 24, 48 hours is there's a quarterback controversy in Philadelphia. Here we go. Gardner Minshew, the mustache, he played well. This guy should be the quarterback going forward. There's got to be some type of um, uh, consistency. And now there's got to be some type of controversy. No, no, no. All you saw on Sunday was a bad Jet squad. That's it. And a quarterback and a team take advantage of it. Now, again, if you think about this, Once you get Hurts back, he should rightfully be the starter. I mean, that's just how it is. Like, let's not go crazy. Did you watch the game last night? Did Mac Jones have to throw the ball? No. They ran it 40-something odd times. Well, I got news for you. If the Philadelphia Eagles continue to run the football the way they've been running the football pretty much over the last month and a half of the season— and your quarterback develops a little bit, you might be on to something. You might be on to something. Because it's rare in the NFL where a team is averaging about 5.2 totes a carry. And the Eagles are able to do that. If it ain't broke, don't try to fix it. And things broke, no pun intended, for the Philadelphia Eagles. The Falcons lost, which helped them. The Vikings lost, to the then winless Detroit Lions now would a win. Detroit Lions on the last play of the game. That broke for them. The 49ers loss. So the things, if you're an Eagle fan, that you needed to break for you, they broke. And sometimes all you need is a little bit of opportunity and you need a little bit of like, uh, luck, just like in life. Right now, the Philadelphia Eagles are the eighth seed in the playoffs. As crazy as it sounds. Why? Because the NFC East stinks. Why? Because the NFC stinks. Why? Because there's parity in the NFL. But they should not have to apologize for that. I'll tell you right now, if that's Washington, if that's Dallas, if that's my Giants, I'm not apologizing for that. Get me in the playoffs at 8-9. Get me in the playoffs at 7-10. Get me in the playoffs at 9-8. I'll take it and run with it. Now, I don't believe in the whole control your old destiny narrative because you really can't. Your destiny is your destiny. You can't control it. But the Philadelphia Eagles have positioned themselves where if they can go on a little bit of a run here, okay, coming out of the bye against a Washington team that looks pretty good right now. Two out of three weeks, a bad giant team, and then maybe a Cowboys team that has nothing to play for. Things just got interesting. You stick with Hurts. Does Gardner Minshew do some things better than Jalen Hurts? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. But again, let it play out with this kid. Let it play out. He's got him this far. He showed he's a gamer. And they knew they didn't need him against the Jets. So now you saw something that you have in Minshew. And I've told you this. I've said this for a couple years now. He's a good quarterback. 
I just think he got a raw deal in Jacksonville. So you take the win, you go into the bye, you rest up Jalen Hurts, and you move on. And that's how it should be. That's really it. Now, you saw it last night. I mean, look, I, I don't I don't believe when you have a young quarterback, look, I just, I think sometimes you have to be patient. I do. And I said this prior to the season starting, so I'm not going to waver on this. I went on the air and on the record, and I said, quote, if Hertz doesn't progress, if he struggles, if he has a stretch of games where he's, I think I used the 16 or 18 of 38 for a buck 12 and a couple picks, and you see that consistently, then you bench him. But that's not really been the case. It hasn't. He's brought a little juice, a little spark. Okay? Yeah, and Minshew come in as a placeholder, played really well. Goddard played really well. But again, it, it opens up Pandora's box, a little curiosity, what the offense might look like with Minshew at the helm on a longer-term basis. But again, the coach did his best to end that debate before it even got a chance to gain any type of momentum, any type of steam. Quote, he's played really good football when he's in, Sirianni said of Hurts. So when he's healthy and he's back, he's our starter. Boom. Now, he can change his mind on that. But I personally, I think he's earned the right. We all fall in love with the backup. We're at the bar with the gorgeous brunette, but all of a sudden the blonde walks in. So we look. That's nature. It doesn't mean we got to go running towards her. That's just nature. That's how people think. That's how football fans think. That's how football fans think when the, quote, backup comes in and he's effective. Hey, I think Gardner Minshew, he's a gamer, man. You love that. This guy's a six-round draft pick. Out of Washington State. The irony is, he took over for who? The same quarterback that took over for Carson Wentz a couple years ago, Nick Foles. But just because the uh, the blonde does a couple laps around the bar, doesn't mean you're going to go home with her. So, like I said, good moment, good for him. They won the football game, they go into the bye. That's all that matters. Because everything else broke. Everything you needed to break. I can turn around and I can give you some teams in the AFC that are running for the hills right now. I'll give you the Buffalo Bills. They don't know what the hell they're doing. They have absolutely no clue what's going on right now. They're going backwards. Why? Because they're not winning games at the line of scrimmage. So you look at the Philadelphia Eagles. They can run the football. They can maintain the line of scrimmage. They can maintain the point of attack. Keep doing what's worked. Don't switch it up. And you caught a couple nice breaks, thanks to Detroit. Thanks to Seattle. You caught a couple nice breaks. And you don't need to apologize. I think Washington, Washington and the Browns, if you recall, were my preseason Super Bowl picks. The Washington uh, football team is playing really good football right now. That quarterback is in line for a contract extension. I don't care what anyone says. I don't, you know, sometimes the numbers don't always tell the story. He's played really well for Washington. He really has. Yeah, okay, sometimes there's bad picks. I know the one was deflected the other day, but he's a flat-out gamer, and he makes plays, man. On the road against a good Raiders team, took him right down the field for the game-winning field goal. It's the kind of guy you want. And if you're the Eagles, you think you have that in Jalen Hurts, right, the gamer. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So we'll dive into a little bit of the NFL. Johnny Mack in uh, about five or so, football in the 20s. Lloyd Vance in the 5 o'clock hour. Vance's view. We'll get into some NBA plays. And I know we don't talk much about it, only really when the playoffs come, but you got a a sprint going a little NHL and some flyers today making a change at the helm. Right? Vigneault out which is not a surprise because they've struggled mightily. And, again, the coaching changed in a matter last night. 
<laughs> I mean, you love the fact that the offense was able to score a bunch of goals. That's fantastic. Hey, wonderful. Get the offense in gear. Boom. But they gave up seven to Colorado. Yeah, the Flyers right now stink. They're not a good hockey club. They're not. They're not a good team. And that's why they turn around and they made the coach the fall guy because they've dropped nine in a row now, eight, and then you go with the interim route last night and they lose that one. Hours after they follow, uh, fired their head coach. So, I mean, look, uh, they're not a good hockey team right now, but that might be able to put a little money in your pocket if you want to lean them going forward. And we'll get into the NBA. So last night was another example why when you watch the Philadelphia 76ers while you watch Embiid, you have to sit back and say, you know, this guy can be as great as he wants to be. And last night was the perfect example. You talk about dominating force last night, Embiid with 43 and 15. He was a flat-out beast. And you want a player that's supposed to be your your chip, the guy that's going to put his teammates on his shoulder, your centerpiece to will you to a win when you need it. And last night, the Sixers were desperate for a win, and they got it in overtime against the, Harlot, uh, the Hornets, 127-124. That was a desperate team. That was a desperate team. And I say it, yeah, they beat the Hawks, but they came off that bad loss to the Celtics, and they dropped three out of four going into that Atlanta game. So that's a nice one last night by the Sixers. All right, 609-445-1490. You got a lot of stuff to dive into. Johnny Mack coming up on the other side, football in the 20s. Lloyd Vance in the 5 o'clock hour. You out there as well, at Rich Q on Q. 4-1 with the picks over the weekend. Hopefully you guys were able to catch some tickets. The cherry on the top last night, the coup de gras. We told you we loved New England on Thursday, and we loved them enough where we also hedged and took the under. So not a bad Monday night for us. Uh, we'll get into the debacle that is the New York football Giants and why I believe at this moment they not only should fire their head coach, Joe Judge, but they should also fire their GM, Dave Gettleman. Not today, not tomorrow. It should have been done Sunday after a putrid loss to Miami. Mike Lennon, Mike God. Now they got to throw out Jake Fromm from State Farm against the Chargers. Yeah, have fun with that one. All right, 17 past 4 o'clock hour. Crank it up on a Tuesday edition of BYP right here on AM 1490 Sports Betting Radio.